Hey, what's up everyone? Patrick here. Welcome back and moving on with hypothesis testing. We're now going to talk about proportions. So the way I'm going to organize this video is I'm going to show you what we've covered so far with hypothesis testing from a higher level and how proportions fits within that. And then I'm going to show you an example to show you how we deal with proportions technically. So, so far what we've been doing with hypothesis testing is we've been testing the population mean. And as we know, we've ran into two cases where either the population standard deviation is known and when it's unknown. Right, so when it's known, we use the z-distribution or we do a z-test. When it's unknown, we're doing a t-test. And then we further made a distinction of whether we're doing one-tailed tests or two-tailed tests. So I've done examples for both kinds. And then the one-tailed we could split that up into a left tail test or a right tail test. So that's kind of the flow we've been going through. And then same thing when the population standard deviation is unknown. So either we got a one tailed, we got a two tailed, and then the one is split up into a left tail test and then a right tail test. And then within that, you can also have a list versus the parameters being given of the sample. So we've dealt with that too, but it all sort of fits within this diagram here. Now, we can also do hypothesis testing on the population proportion, which is what we're gonna be doing in this video. Now, if you remember from confidence intervals, this looks very similar. With confidence intervals, we did it for the population mean. When the population standard deviation was known, we used a Z distribution. When it was unknown, we used a T distribution. And if you remember confidence intervals for the population proportion, we only used a Z distribution. Well, same thing with hypothesis testing. With population proportions, we're always gonna be doing a Z test. So you don't have to worry about this step over here. But population proportions, they can also either be one tailed or two tailed tests. So you got to still read the question very carefully, construct that null and alternative hypothesis, and that's going to tell you are you dealing with a one tailed or two tailed test? And then the one tailed can be left tailed or right-tailed. So not too bad with proportions. You don't have to worry about this step, but you still have to distinguish whether you're dealing with a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. And honestly, the higher level steps of a population mean, population proportion, exactly the same. So you gotta find the null and the alternative hypothesis. Then you gotta find the critical values depending on your significance level, and they're always gonna be on the Z distribution. And then you got to calculate your test statistic and see where does that fall in the rejection regions or in that acceptance region. And the only difference is how we're going to calculate that test statistic. So the formula for it is going to be different for proportions versus how it was with population means. Basically exactly the same when we did confidence intervals. If you remember that formula was different for that margin of error as well. So let's do an example to show how all of this works technically. So let's say a store wants to entice customers to use cash debit for spending because of the extra processing costs of credit cards. And so as of now, 70% of customers use credit cards. The store runs a promotion to motivate cash debit spending. After the promotion from a sample of 94 orders, 56 use their credit card. 56 customers use their credit card. At a 1% significance level, is there evidence the promotion worked? 
Now, before getting into this, if you remember from confidence intervals, I want to reintroduce this symbol here. We represented the population proportion with this pi symbol. Right, so that's another difference you may see coming up in your textbook when dealing with proportions, the symbol used to represent that population parameter. So before we were dealing with the mean, and it was represented by this mu symbol. So when you see that, you're usually dealing with the population mean. When you see this, you're dealing with the population proportion, right? So just as a heads up. So we're going to be using this in this example. So as of now, the customers, all the customers in the store, 70% of them use credit cards. So this population proportion right now is 0 0.7. And the store wants to get customers to use more cash debit instead of credit cards. And so they run a promotion to entice that. So basically they want the proportion of that credit card use to go down. And so after the promotion, they want to test whether it worked or not. So basically they're testing whether that proportion is going to be less than 0 0.7, right? That's when, that's how they're testing if this promotion worked. And so the null hypothesis is just going to be the opposite of that. So that proportion is greater than or equal to 0 0.7. So notice by how this is constructed, the alternative hypothesis is constructed, it's a left tail test. That we're going to be using here. So if we draw this, left tail test, so there's one critical value over here. So that's the critical value. So if we fade this in, so basically this here is going to be 1%. And that's the rejection region. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And if we're rejecting the null hypothesis, then there's evidence pointing towards the alternative hypothesis, which means that the proportion is less than 0 0.7, which would mean that the promotion worked, right? So if our test statistic falls here, then the promotion, uh, then there's evidence that the promotion worked. If it falls here in that acceptance region of the null or the uh, non-rejection region of the null, then there's not enough evidence showing that the promotion worked. Now, Critical value, as I mentioned before, when you're dealing with proportions, you're always using a Z distribution. So multiple ways you can look up this critical value. You could use a Z table. You can also use your calculator, right? So going through these inputs, distribution, normal, and then uh, we're finding the inverse of the normal. We're finding a Z score. And then over here, you can just input variable, which tail are you looking at? It doesn't really matter. You could look at this tail, 1%, or you could look at this right tail, which would be 99%. Uh, let's look at the left one. So this would be 0 0.01, or sorry, this would be left, rather, and the area would be 0 0.01. And then standard deviation is 1, and the mean is 0 for a Z distribution. And when you execute that, you would end up getting negative 2.0. Three, three. Right. If you change the tail to right and put 0.99 here, you'd get that same value. So the critical value is negative 2.33. And now all that's left to do is to find that test statistic and see where it falls on this diagram. And the formula for test statistic when you're dealing with proportions is this right here. So it's a Z test statistic again, because we're using the Z distribution. It's basically P minus that population proportion. This P here, if you remember from confidence intervals, is basically the sample proportion. So let me actually write that. So we're looking at the proportion of people using credit cards in this case.
And so this P, you'll see that the formula is represented as X over N. So X is the number of people in the sample that share the characteristic that you're looking at. So basically notice we're looking at the proportion of credit card users. So in this sample of 94, 56 use their credit card. So this X here is 56 over that uh, sample size N, which is 94. And when you do that in your calculator, you'd end up getting 0 0.5957. I'm going to keep it to four decimal places, right? So that's the sample proportion. So notice how the proportion did go down, right? To 0.5957 from 0 0.7 question is, is that enough, right? Is that enough evidence for us to feel confident in saying that the promotion worked? So what we would do is we would plug in this P over here. So going back to that formula, it's basically that sample proportion 0.5957 minus the population proportion all over the square root of that population proportion, one minus the population proportion, all over n, the sample size, which is uh, 94. And notice that in this formula, there is nothing about population standard deviation or sample standard deviation. And that's why with proportions, we don't have to worry about whether that population standard deviation is known or unknown. That's why we always use the Z-test because the, um, there's less parameters basically to calculate that test statistic. It's only dependent on the sample proportion, the population proportion, which is used here as well, and that sample size. And when you do this in your calculator, you'd end up getting negative 2.21. And so that is the value of the test statistic. And then where does it fall on this diagram? Notice negative 2.21 would be right here, right? So that's negative 2.21. So notice that in this case, the conclusion is that we fail to reject. The null. And what that means in this scenario is that there is not enough evidence to show that the promotion worked. Right? Not enough evidence to show that that proportion went, um, went down, that um, less customers are using their credit card. And if you wanna do this whole process with the calculator, you would go through these inputs here. So you got stat and then you hit F3 for test, F1, cause we're doing a Z test. And then you would hit F3 because we're dealing with proportions. You'll see like one slash P there. And then you'll get to this input screen. So this proportion input is basically the alternative hypothesis. So we wanna put this uh, symbol, this less than symbol because it's a left tail test. So this would be less than P naught. And then this P naught here is the same thing as this pi. So the calculator represents it as P naught. And so, that population proportion is 0 0.7. The X value, as I mentioned, is the number of observations in the sample that share the characteristic that you're looking at. So it would be the 56. And then the sample size is 94. And then your output is gonna be right there. So notice that this is the Z score, the test statistic, uh, notice it's negative 2.21. I kept it to four decimal places. Here I rounded it, but basically the same thing. Notice we're also given the p-value. So the p-value is 0 0.0137. What do we always compare the p-value to? Well, the significance level. 
that we're looking at, and the significance is 1% or 0 0.01. And we know that when the p-value is greater than the significance level, then it means that we're going to fail to reject the null always. If the p-value is less than the significance level, then it means that that test statistic is going to be in that rejection region. And then this p hat here is basically the sample proportion. If you remember, we calculated that. It was 0.5957, so the calculator gives you that as well. Be careful because there's a p over here and a p over here, so make sure you distinguish them. They're totally different. This is the p value, this is the sample proportion. And then the sample size is 94. Right, so whether you do it manually, whether you do it with the calculator, you get the same conclusion. You fail to reject the null, there's not enough evidence that the promotion 